Well, hmm. Cut a hole in the transmission cross member. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing. That's a dumb thing, but that's a thing. <laughs> Hello again, dear viewer. Uh, we return to the saga of Dale. I got a lot of videos for you coming out here in the next uh, few weeks. They've all been shot over the course of the past couple of months. I'm, I just need to make videos. Sammy agrees. Sammy's in the, in Dale. He, somewhere, there's a dog in there. Let's talk first about the air fuel ratio gauge. Uh, I bought an AEM air fuel ratio gauge. The size of it matches up perfectly to the size of the old uh, clock that was in the center console. So that's where I decided to put it. Uh, in order to put in an air fuel ratio gauge, you of course need to be able to read the mixture of the air and the fuel. So that's done with an oxygen sensor. Sam, do you want to get out? You can be out, but we're still going to be in here. He's a terrible shop dog. He just won't sit down somewhere and be cool. You need an oxygen sensor to measure your air fuel ratio. The oxygen sensor has to be installed in your header, uh, your exhaust manifold. So we had to do some work to uh, get the exhaust manifold out and then put the oxygen sensor in and then wire everything up and make it work. So here we go. As per usual, drop something in a funky place. Well, I don't even see it. This it's just sitting down there, you think? Well, you gotta, what? Well, I see it, I see it. Hey, ah. Got him. Pick her off. We'll just leave this here for the moment. It's like pain on that hood. Oh yeah, looking good. You got all four off? Yep. Um, lift it off of there. Oh. Yeah, I thought it was easier than that. Easy, easy. Decarb. How about, um, right about there. Okay, so dumb, weird Siamese manifolds. You got bolts that do stuff for both the intake and the exhaust at the same time. Okay, so now we just gotta start taking off all these 14s, they look like. Uh, and then there's the under the car work, which you could do of uh, figuring out what we need to do to take off the clamp that is in between the header and the exhaust back there. Yeah, I think it, I think it's just some standard hardware that you just take off and then the clamp will come off and I'll start working on all these 14s and we'll be We'll have this manifold out of here in no time. Yeah, that's what happens every time. The nut starts to turn and then the whole stud just backs up. Pinch. Move. Now just move. We'll just use this as a hammer. <coughs> Yep. Might as well have the exhaust coming straight up with a flat. Yeah. Off the hood. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. Be able to get to that other And dropped it. Put it on there. <laughs> See? And now you go in with the extension and you just barely get a bite on it. There she goes. She's in there. And now she comes out. But now you gotta be wary of getting it stuck. You gotta bring it out enough to where you can get it out by hand. But not too much where you get the socket, the socket stuck, because I've been there before too. Oh, you're gonna lose the washer. Oh, I don't want it. Okay, I got it. I didn't lose it. But... Oh, Easy. oh yeah, there's some over here too. I forgot about those. And one of them has to. I don't know. They just pull off. Break it. Okay. Yeah, that one's all the way off now. Okay, one intake manifold. It's tiny. Yo, a deep socket is its own extension. Luckily, the head was cut at a place that makes it a little bit easier to extract. But I can't remember the last time I did it how I did it. So we'll go down with it there and then see if it wants to. Oh, there she goes. There she is. Here. So the bung. For the O2 sensor, has to go in the top so the sensor points up. You can't have it sitting down because then, you know, stuff. 
condensation and whatever will get into it. So we got to weld our O2 sensor bone somewhere in here, which I also need to verify that it's going to clear. I guess I should have got down there and looked at it before I really took this out of there, but yeah, that would have been smart, and I'm not too smart. But the, you know, an O2 sensor is pretty tall, so we kind of got to make sure that it's going to clear, and there's not a lot of room down in there. Let me just dip her back down in here. Sammo! Sammy. You need a good boy. I got Lord have mercy. You know, it looks like from here that it's going up under the transmission cross member. Um, I need to get a better look at it. Well, the video is actually pretty telling here. So here's our pipe, and it's coming to the exhaust, and the exhaust is hanging in the position that it normally hangs, pretty much. So I think... I think that it's going to clear if I just put it in that... And that ought to be all right. I gotta get my butt up off the floor. Okay, one header. And what we think we're gonna do, since she sits on the car like this, oh, that's handy. Convenient. Um, is that we're gonna go right about here. We're gonna, we need more, obviously we need more exhaust clamp up here. Try to get that to there. But we're gonna go about right here for the bung and let it point out at an angle that away. And that'll help it clear past that transmission uh, mount. Is that what that is? Transmission cross member. Yeah. Record. Okay. That's the old clock. Which, conveniently, the new gauge is just about the same size, so we're going to put it in where the clock used to be. Now let's find, here's our O2 sensor. It's looking good. Uh, but it needs the bung, which has got to be in here as well. Come here, bung. Is that it? That's it. I imagine we just got to drill a hole that this end fits through. Probably drill a hole that this sits in. That that sits in. Yep. You're right. And then this will yeah. this will drill on that way, and then that just barely pokes into the exhaust manifold. So we got to drill a stepped hole. That's as big as this, which we got step bits, so it shouldn't be hard. Yeah. All right, well, just a little bit of video of that, but we welded a bong in, and now we've got the oxygen sensor, just making sure that it doesn't, uh, that it actually still threads in. Looks like it will thread in and seal, so that's all good. Whee! You know what? He brought up a good point. What does this plug into? Let's go figure that out. We've got some stickers. Some... There's a clue here. A little, yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. All right, oh, there we go. There's the plug. So, and the plug's got the little finger on it, so it looks like if you're not doing a custom job that you will just plug this end into the oxygen sensor. It's gonna need power, though, right? Yeah, you plug one of these into there, and then mm -hmm. the power I see. power yeah. goes here, right? Hmm. 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 Well, there are directions somewhere, presumably, so we could read those, I guess. Which, um, hope I didn't lose. They're not in here. Hmm, mm, boy. How do? I suppose we'll watch a YouTube video or two and it'll tell us how to use this thing. All right, we're just hanging that exhaust manifold back up there so we can try out the old. O2 sensor and it's way under there. There's no way to get to it from up here, but I can see the angle. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna go under. There's the pipe. And on to the other side yep. of the pipe is the O2 sensor. I, I, I hope we're gonna have room. Oh boy. I don't know if there's gonna be room. Well, damn. Do they make a low profile? I know. Oxygen sensor? The cord and everything takes up too much space. We should have done it further back, it looks like. Well, hmm. Cut a hole in the transmission cross member. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing. That's a dumb thing, but that's a thing. <laughs> and I have no idea if this is the right angle for this thing or if it's, you know, I don't I don't have a clue. I just knew it needed to be up. I'm going to try to screw it in as far as I can get it by hand, and that way 
Uh, it will approximate its real position. Oh, is it fine? I mean, that's... Is that there? That's as, I think so. That's as far as the header wants to move. So if that's where the header sits, then that's that's it. That's got it. It's not... As long as this stuff doesn't move... And I can I can bend the the cord to the inside, and it'll have plenty of room. That should be okay. So at this point, I need to stop and tell you that I uh, really searched around for a long time for keyed power for the uh, gauge itself, and it was not the easiest to find. There were some wires hanging out behind that I thought were stereo wires. I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna do it. This this will be it. Uh, that they, they were not it. That's just all there was to it. But as I was digging around underneath the dash, I found a terminated wire that was marked in some way, maybe a piece of tape or whatever. And lo and behold, Toyota put in a wire for keyed power so you could use it for whatever you needed to use it for, you know, a stereo or something back in the day. So, you know, Toyota engineering saved the day on that one. So with the gauge installed, we were able to go out and test. And when we tested, you know, it was hard to adjust the carb, but I put a double pumper uh, sprayer in and got the jets adjusted. It's an ongoing battle. It changes with the weather, right? Carb adjustment, but it's so much better now than it was previously. And with the gauge installed, it allowed us to move on to the valve adjustment, which uh, was a little bit more of an adventure than we thought it would be. We'll save that for the next video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Bye. I feel like you should have left already. You're still here. Move on to the next one.